We've got some new construction here in the uh, main security area, Universal. Looks like some new kiosks going to be over here. This is where the the big screen used to be. That was like the green screen. I don't know if anybody remembers that. Wow, lots of construction, city walk. Holy crap, my, oh, say it ain't so. Cinnabon is gone. Oh my God, that's been like a staple of coming here for a long time. I've had many a breakfast <laughs> at Cinnabon. Oh, it hurts, it hurts. I never would have seen that coming. Forgive me if this is old news already, but Literally, I was here about two weeks ago with my brother and sister-in-law and niece, and Cinnabon was still a thing. So this just happened recently. Hell, like the comic book guy would say. Good morning, everybody. It's Maddie. Welcome back to Main Street Fire Rescue. As you can tell, if you haven't figured out already, I am here at Universal Orlando Resort because I've heard through the, you know, that old grapevine thing, that blogging grapevine, uh, looking through the news and all that, that there's been some construction updates, and it's been, a, you know, about two weeks since I've been here, so I wanted to see what was going on with the updates, check some things out in City Walk. This whole Cinnabon thing caught me by surprise. I didn't know that was happening. I've also heard, again, through the social media networks, that there's been some new Epic Universe merch just dropped recently here at Universal, and, uh, we're kind of close to getting, pro I, I would imagine we're close to seeing what our summer tribute store is going to be over on Universal side. And uh, maybe we'll talk some things uh, Epic Universe as well. So, you know, as I like to say, let's get our ass in gear. Let's get in these parks and check some of this stuff out. First, before we go into any of the parks, I'm going to hit the uh, gift shop up right here, the main gift shop, and see what this new Epic Universe merch is all about. Okay, I'm not sure if this has been here before. Again, I last time I was here, I breezed right through all this, but there's the uh, basically the drafting plans for the Islands of Adventure Lighthouse. What's wild is this is the stuff I used to do, and I this is what I went to school for. Well, school the first time anyway. All of these little little things right here, these represent different drawings to, uh, like that's like page three reference drawing A-504. A and when you see these type of things, these little circles with the arrows pointed at them, that means that somewhere in the drawings, there's a cutaway drawing of that, like what it looks like on the inside. There's a, it's like if you were to cut the thing off right there and look inside, that's basically what that's referencing. This is really neat to see. I, I have never noticed this. There's another one down there. There's another cutaway. There's a cutaway. There's a whole bunch of them. Oh, and there's even the uh, the details on the on the light at the very top. Very cool. Up in the very top, it's hard to see because of the reflection, but it says custom ceramic final uh, with lightning protection. So there's a lightning rod at the top of the lighthouse. And then they also have another one for the universal side, but this one doesn't have all the measurements and stuff on it. The other thing that you would see on this would be the name of the firm that drew it, the name of the person that drew it up, and then the dates and how many sheets and everything. This brings back some good memories. But, anybody might ask why I don't do that anymore. I just, once everything went to AutoCAD, I just, I couldn't sit behind a desk anymore, anymore and punch a computer. I, I love drawing. When I first started in college, I was doing stuff like that with my hands on paper. I love that. Take that away, that kind of, I don't know, just, I don't know, got, got bored with it. Plus, I gotta be out and about, which is why I do what I do now. Oh, it's my buddies.
Ooh, there's some epic stuff right there. Oh, we came through the right door. Wow. Holy smokes. Wow, so we got lane. Oh, these are cool lanyards, man. With the lanyard pouch. These are the shirts, like what I got over in the pass holder lounge a couple months ago. Hello, how to train your dragon, Isle of Burke. This was also released recently. This is one of the lands coming to uh, Epic Universe. Oh, they do have some pins. I can't wait for the first Epic Universe pins to come out. Oh, this is kind of cool too. Wow. Oh, and even got a that's a pretty cool patch. All right, it's slowly working its way in. All right, well, it's good to see that the Epic Universe stuff is filtered out into the main gift shop because before, the only way you could get an Epic shirt was you had to be an annual pass holder. So this is good to see. I would imagine people are going to start buying this stuff up like crazy pretty soon. And uh, I think it was last week they just announced Super Nintendo World, which is going to be part of Epic Universe. So I would imagine we're going to start seeing some uh, Super Nintendo World stuff probably pretty shortly. So what we'll do is we'll start over on Universal side. We'll check out the new DreamWorks land, which is going to be opening in about a month. And then uh, we'll head over to Island of Adventure and see what we'll there. The other thing I really, really like is Universal's got this new ticket system where you scan your ticket, you look at the little uh, eyeglass thing, and it scans you in instantly. It is pretty freaking cool. I'm not going to show the group, but off to, the, off to my left over here, there's a whole group, whole family going through stretches. They're literally like they're getting ready to run a marathon. So first things first, since we're doing construction updates and all that, I thought... One other thing that I will do to help everybody out, I'm going to kind of show you where all the first aid stations are. In case you're ever in the parks and you need something, you can get Tylenol, Ibuprofen, Band-Aids. You know, if you're not feeling well, these are places you can go. Right when you walk in, there's Minion Mayhem and there's the new Minion Blast. That way, this is the main avenue. You have this gift shop right here on location. And if you go off to the right, this is right as you walk in. It's straight ahead. It looks like a movie theater. I'm not used to seeing it from this side. I used to come in on the back entrance. But right here, right by guest services, lost and found. If you see a building right here, the studio audience center, this is where it's at. And you basically go right through the right through the door there and that, that there's a full setup in there. This is kind of the secondary satellite location. I'll show you the main one. But yes, if you need it, need first aid, and you're at the front of the park, this is one of the locations. Wow, Minion Mayhem's five minutes. That's a zero and a five. That's awesome, man. This is, I tell you, this is the time to come to these parks right now. Five minutes, Minion Blast. So the first place I'm going to head to is DreamWorks Land. We're going to check that out first and maybe get a ride in on ET while we're at it. Well, since we're right here, let's talk about this. Rumors are abound that Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, this roller coaster in front of me, is going to be closing permanently early next year to make way for a monstrous new project. Some think a Fast and Furious style roller coaster like the one at Hollywood, but we shall see. This is kind of in a, a unique area because it's kind of in between the parks. It's on the back lots. And while it is a fun coaster, it has been absolutely plagued with problems since it opened in the mid-2000s. Um, it's been very rough. 
you know, a lot of side to side lateral movements, which is really interesting because when you sit here and watch this thing, you would never guess that it is like that. It sounds so freaking smooth. It's not even funny, but when you ride it, it has to do, uh, I guess, with the wheelbase on the coaster trains. It's not far apart enough, and it causes a ton of side to side lateral movements, which I've ridden this thing many times, and if you're not ready for it, it beats the ever living crap out of you. And it can lay a beating down on you really hard which sucks because it's a great ride it really is it's a fun layout uh it's a it's a cool ride riding with the music you know that you can select now i think they've knocked the tracks down there was like at one time like 25 or 30 tracks you could select but now they've dropped it to seven i think one in each genre of music but there still is the secret track list though that you can find look that one up how to do the secret track list the other thing that kind of plagued this thing a little bit, and a lot of coaster enthusiasts hate, but you see like over there, this thing has tons of brake runs in it. It's got like four, I think four or five of them. And they do that to increase the capacity, meaning putting more trains on the track. But every time this thing gets going and you're like, you're really getting into it, you, you, you go into a brake run and it slows it down. So it's just, I mean, it's a cool concept. It is a fun ride, but yeah, I can see why they're they're probably looking at, at redoing this thing because it, it's it's had its share of problems. And because of its design, how it's built like that, if the wind gets higher, I think, than 15 or 20 miles an hour, they cannot run it, which is, which is wild. Since we're right here, too, I thought we'd take a look at this. This is the new Lagoon show that Universal's getting ready to debut. All of this is going to happen uh, basically Father's Day weekend. This is going to debut. DreamWorks Land's going to open. And a lot of new stuff's gonna ha gonna hit at the resort here. And the other reason, going back to the Rip Ride Rocket, the other reason that a lot of people are thinking that that's gonna be the next major overhaul is because the parks usually do two to three attractions per side. So Islands of Adventure just had a whole bunch of work done recently with their new rides. Now in Universal side, DreamWorks Land has started. So once that wraps up, then they'll start on the next big project. And then probably once that's done, then they'll go back to Islands of Adventure and my guess is going to be working on the Lost Continent. But you can see all of the sprayers, the fountain effects. I, as I said earlier, there's going to be a drone show. They've been testing it. Some people have actually spotted the drones testing at night. And you can see the tents over there where they've been doing some of the, I imagine, the controls for all of this. But they're building all of this up over here, too. That's the Central Park area, which was a big viewing area for the other show they had. And what's really cool is you can see all these little spouts in that sticking above the water. There's a whole platform that this sits on that they can literally raise up out of the water and they can lower it down. It's pretty neat. The name for this new show is going to be called Sensational. C-I-N-E and then Sational. S-A-T-I-O-N-A-L. Symphonic Spectacular. From the concept art, this thing looks like it's going to be pretty damn cool. The last one they just they had for a little while was, was pretty damn neat. I can't wait to see this one. I would imagine this is going to be prime viewing down here along with where they're building over there. There's tons of tower speakers that have gone up. Lots of work. This is normally a bar area during their special events like Christmas, Mardi Gras, Halloween Horror Nights. But during the, during the off times it's just kind of here. This is a great spot. Check this out. I'm wondering right here. Okay, just putting this out there going out on a limb if this isn't a uh, platform for the drones what do you think and you can see all the spouts in the water right there that's just one little segment so there's gonna be all kinds Universal's done a fantastic job with their nighttime shows. There's also, you obviously can't see them, but you can see the spotlights up on the roof. There's spotlight towers there. There's also firework launch sites mounted to the roofs of these buildings as well. Now, they also have to be careful with the fireworks because Universal sits in a residential neighborhood. If you were to fly a drone from here and go straight up and look around, you would see that not far from here are housing communities and Dr. Phillips High School actually sits right behind the Wizarding World of Harry Potter uh, Hogsmeade, which they have coined Dr. Phillips High School, uh, Hogwarts School of Magic. 
And this is where you walk into Central Park right here. Now they're testing out the beat builder stuff. And here we are. Second first aid station. Fast and Furious Supercharged Building is right here. Which used to be the old Beetlejuice Graveyard Review. Anybody remember that one? That was a tough one to lose. A lot of people hated losing that. In fact, they kept the fountain though. The fountain is still there. But right here, you'll see this main, this building right here. And then there's this gates to go backstage. And this is the other first aid station. This is actually the main headquarters for all of first aid at both Universal Parks. So this is, this is a big building in here. A lot of stuff goes on in there. So if you need it, right here by Fast and Furious. Since we're back here, not really a construction update, but this is the old uh, Fear Factor uh, live theater. One of the casualties to the, you know what, shutdowns in 2020. Um, what was really neat though, was when I worked here and I was going on my park tours, part of my orientation is, I had a really, really awesome trainer that was all about the details. And we got to walk in into this and he was telling me that before this was Fear Factor Live, this was a Wild West stunt show back in the day. And if you go toward the back, like back of house there, and you go behind the scenes, there's actually still stables there where they kept the horses. They actually had live horses in the show. The stables are there. You can still see like hay that was like still stuck in part of the hay lofts. And then you can see where they built over the, uh, the Wild West facade. Because when you go behind the stage, you can see like the glass is still there. It still says like saloon on it and, and all kinds of other prints that would give it the Wild West theme. But what they did when they made Fear Factor Live is they just, they, they just built over it. So it's all still there. It, it's really interesting to walk back there. Obviously, don't do that unless you work here. Don't go behind the scenes. However, I wish I wish you could take everybody back there and see this because it is a really, really neat thing to see. Part of Universal history, actually. Well, here we are, coming up on DreamWorks land. To my right is the area where you exit out of Central Park. And straight ahead is SpongeBob Store Pants. To my left is the Animal Actors on location, which I have to see that show still. It's, from what I understand, it's pretty good. Ooh, and straight ahead, we got lots of construction. Wow. Oh, look, they're building a new sign. Is that for E.T.? I think it is. I haven't seen this yet. Oh, my gosh. So I'm going to try to stand right here and zoom in. Because the closer I get, you won't be able to see over the work walls. Here's the here's the main entrance. I don't know if this is going to be the the main entrance sign or if they're going to have another one. Wow! Oh. You can actually see straight ahead right there. That's the newly announced troller coaster, which is going to be themed after the trolls. And that used to be Woody Woodpecker's Nuthouse Coaster. I think that's one of the only things that kind of stuck around. I believe part of the water maze that they used to have back in the Curious George area, part of that stayed. It's all, all the rest of it got rethemed. But it looks like they're going to bring the splash pad back, which is great to have. And you can actually see there's some people up there on a walkway. From what I heard in the press release on this, this is going to be a great place to just have fun for kids and, and, and get wet on a hot day here in Orlando. This is going to be perfect. This right here, I guess this main area, this is uh, Shrek's meet, new meet and greet area. I guess Donkey's going to be there as well. Yeah, this, this, is, this is unbelievable. I mean, they have made a huge, huge amount of progress on this in a year. Just think about this, it's been about a year and a half. Right there is Gabby's Dollhouse. There's gonna be some new restaurants back here, a whole new play area, place to get wet, young and old alike, and just have some fun. My curiosities though are peaked because there, there was a giant ball pit back there that 
when I did my my uh, kind of farewell vlog to the to the kid zone that used to be back here, I went back into that ball pit and they had all these air cannons. You could fire balls at at, at each other in this huge arena they had, which was really awesome. Hopefully they've kept that. I'll be curious. But this this just looks amazing. And then right here, the structure that is that is indeed for ET. And I just saw this. ET is closed until the 15th so a couple more days darn it i wanted to write et today that's all good but i think what they're doing is because of this right here um it's going to be very hard to see the main entrance to et so they're going to put it right here so people don't obviously walk past it and miss it if you need to get in the et gift shop that's still open but the attraction is currently closed while they retheme the front entrance i like how they did how they've done that though because it's it looks all wooded it kind of fits in with the area. Man, very well done. Just judging by the looks of the, how DreamWorks land looks from the walls there, it looks like uh, looks like they're about ready to open. I would imagine since the, the the grand opening is Father's Day weekend, so again we're about a month away. I would imagine media previews are going to be pretty soon, and then if they do a pass holder preview, I would say in the next couple weeks. We'll keep y'all updated. Oh my gosh, one of the one of the prizes in there, if you knock all the bottles down, is the Springfield Isotopes baseball. I wonder if they if I gave them 50 bucks if they just let me have it. And if you go into that telephone box and dial M-A-G-I-C, you'll get the Ministry of Magic. We're gonna take that magic train to Islands of Adventure. Right there. Ready? Here we go! <laughs> I mean, is this theming or what, huh? Like, it doesn't get better than this. I'm not gonna spoil the magic, but once you learn how this thing works, it's pretty amazing actually. It is truly stunning. If you want an awesome picture of the train, and uh, once you arrive at Hogsmeade Station, this area right here, you get an excellent view. Yeah, that's so flipping cool. All right, one of the other construction updates, I thought it's not really a construction update, just more of a rumor update. I came over to Islands of Adventure, check out the Lost Continent area and give you my thoughts on what they probably may do with this place. So over here where this fountain is, this used to be the 8th Voyage of Sinbad show. Also was the extended queue for Hagrid's motorbike adventure. But this is a great fountain. It's all interactive. It'll talk with you and spray water at you sometimes. It's pretty fun. But this is an area that clearly they need to do something with because this is a really neatly designed area. You can see all the morning crowds, everybody's heading into Hogwarts or Hogsmeade. And then also while we're here, this is the location of the Islands of Adventure first aid station right here. It's kind of tucked away back here. You got to look for it. But right in here. There used to be, these aren't used much anymore, but they had a, key, uh, like a, what do you call it? Like stanchions out here and all that. And they had a line you could form if there was one. And you'd get on that phone and ring inside. And you'd come out, you'd basically treat the people out here on these benches if you could. Because there was, you know, COVID-19 stuff going on and they didn't want anybody unless they were super sick inside the first aid station. So they utilized this phone and I will tell you, if it was a busy day, that phone would ring off the hook nonstop. You have to get up from behind the desk and come out and see what people needed. And you get back and you come back, phone would ring again. You have to get... <laughs> I, we were all very, very happy the day they, they got rid of all that. Things that I'll never forget, I'll tell you that much. But yes, if you need first aid, it's back here in the Lost Continent. It's right by the restrooms, and if you look for the, uh, I'm trying to think, there's a 
the look for the gift shop here and then delicious kebabs delicious kebabs right there it's in this area but it seems to me that this this area is far too nice to just leave it be i mean this was at one point before before the wizarding world was even a thing this was where uh, dueling dragons was the entrance was somewhere around in here And I think it was at the end down there they used to have a, a restaurant that looked like a giant uh, tree stump. It was huge. I mean, the theming was on point. It always has been in this area. And right around the corner here, this was the old Poseidon's Fury attraction. This was a walkthrough uh, show. It was a, I want to say interactive, but it was very well detailed. It, th this thing was legit, man. I used to like this. I came out here last year uh, right before they closed and sure enough the day I came out the shit things weren't working right <laughs> the show wasn't running so I had to give my best explanation as to how it worked but the sign you can see has been removed but this was the old main entrance right here you can see where the main the attraction entrance was and then along with the uh, lightning lane or not lightning lane but express pass this is very well detailed though, I will say that. This is pretty cool. Hopefully, hopefully they do something with this. Because this, I mean, look, look, that's outstanding. It looks, literally looks like the building's broken off right there and just fallen over. I mean, it's just, the way they did this is incredible. And this foot here is part of a gigantic statue that's fallen over. Now, the rumors are that this is going to be the new Legend of Zelda land. I could get behind that. But I also do, I kind of like the old school attractions that don't have any IP attached to them. You know? I mean, th 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 this is really neat. <laughs> the attraction was designed that you would leave out this way right here and come down this pathway. And obviously all rides and attractions must exit through the gift shop. So there's one of the last remaining titles right here of the attraction, Treasures of Poseidon. And if you also want a really, really, really good restaurant to eat at, right here. This is called Mythos. It's continually awarded the world's best theme park restaurant year after year. In fact, they had to take out the numbers because it used to say, seven time eight time nine time ten time eleven and onward and then they finally just said voted world's best theme park restaurant This is all vintage Islands of Adventure right here. And they even have a really nice walkway that goes down there. Used to go down there and watch them build the uh, Velocicoaster. I've mentioned this before, but this is how I picture the entrance to Epic Universe to look like, kind of. Obviously not be the same, but I just it just has that, it has that vibe. Great time at Universal today. Um, not quite done yet though. Just a pleasant surprise while I was coming up here to the parking garage to get my car. Earlier I was bitching because they parked me right on the very end out here, which if you if you know these parking garages from here all the way down to where the attraction entrances are, that's a long walk. But hey, there's far, as they say in, in Rudy, you know, there's far worse things that can go on in life. <laughs> but this actually turned out to be quite nice because as I was putting my stuff in my car, I just happened to look to my right and you can see all of the Epic Universe construction. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you a little glimpse from the parking garage. Oh, and by the way, if you've never seen a lightning rod before up close, this is one right here. Uh, you can see how it's connected to all of the cables and it runs the length of the parking garage up here all the way and then it's everything is grounded so meaning if lightning were to be in the area you can see them everywhere i mean they're even on top of the light poles up there when you come to florida because we are the lightning strike capital of the world to try to keep the patrons safe 
And it's not just here, it's at all the theme parks and pretty much everywhere you go, there's lightning rods on everything. But this is a really neat view of one up close. But this is what they look like. And should lightning hit this particular spot, one, if you are right in this area, that you'd probably go deaf for a few seconds and you'd probably be seeing spots, but you'd be safe because instead of the energy going toward the nearest metal object, which could be a car or a light fixture or anything else metal around here, or even worse, somebody walking, this gathers the energy, this right here gathers the energy of the lightning bolt. It comes down and hits right here and then it follows these cables all the way down here to wherever this is grounded at and this is going to happen within split seconds so yeah next time you're in florida especially the theme parks take a look around at the rooftops and everywhere you'll see these things all over the place so just if you have never seen one of these up close here you go now onward this way you can see where all the cranes are at right there there is Epic Universe. Let's see if I can get my thumb finger in there. Right there. That is Starfall Racers, the roller coaster. That little spike pointed up there, right where the tip of my finger is. That's Mead Hall. That's for uh, the How to Train Your Dragon Isle of Burke, the land there. And then over this way, right there, is the brand new Universal Elios Grand Hotel. That roof, that dome roof was just put on recently right there. I just happened to notice that the other day when they, when the construction updates were done, that hadn't been completed yet. So it looks like the dome roof is on. And I tell you, they are moving fast on this place. You might, I'm gonna take a look. We might be able to see Super Nintendo World, maybe unless it's kind of being hidden by the hotel but usually super, super nintendo world should be right over where my finger is right in this area from certain areas you can see you can see mount beanpole which is right over in here but you get a really cool view of starfall racers right there that's the roller coaster that i think most people are very excited to ride that's going to be a dueling roller coaster which is gonna give a really cool nod to the old Dueling Dragons. With the exception, this one won't be suspended. It'll be on, uh, on top of the track. So there it is, Epic Universe. As you can see, it's not that far from here. So I'll be very excited to see when these new, uh, when this new road gets put in, which again, they're building it right now. They, I think they're calling it the Kirkman Road Extension, which is somehow gonna be somewhere around here it's going to get you over to epic universe and again it's going to keep everybody else away from all of the tra the daily traffic so there we are we're about a year away from opening i think personally it's going to open around january february that's what i think because if you look at the dates of those hotels that are opening the stella nova and terra luna which are right at the entrance you can actually see one of them i'm trying to get a good view on it there's the main hotel. It's actually right there. That's one of them. You can, it's hard to see on here, but with the, with the regular eye, you can actually see the uh, reflective and colorful tiles that are on the outside of that, that hotel. The Elios Grand Hotel, again, is gonna sit at the back of the park. And we obviously can't see it from here, but right where my finger pointing it, where my finger's pointing at, behind the hotel, facing closer to the camera, is a, looks to be a fireworks launch site in the kind of on a built on a peninsula that goes out between uh, two bodies of water, kind of like two ponds. So it looks to be like they're going to have fireworks every night because it's definitely in the concept art and that's a little bit farther away from residential neighborhoods so they might be able to have a little bit better fireworks show than what they can do here i love what they're doing here though because they're utilizing drone technology um and they're utilizing fireworks they just can't have the really tall aerial kind like disney shoots off because of the location and where we're at right now but again with epic universe being way out there that might change a little bit as far as what they can do so there you are, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the new Epic Universe set to debut about a, about a year or less than a year from right now.
good times huh lots and lots of things coming to Universal Orlando I tell you this uh, Epic Universe is going to turn Universal into a full day, I'm sorry, a full week's destination, which a lot of people have taken to social media and said, you know, Disney probably needs to start getting on the ball and be a little more worried than they are right now that, you know, because Universal is hot on their tail. You know, they I, I was listening to a podcast on the way over here and they're talking about how in the mid to early 2000, mid to later 2000s when Universal announced Harry Potter World and Disney was kind of sitting there with the you know with their feet up going yeah whatever and then construction photos started to come out about what you know Hogsmeade was going to look like and then all of a sudden Disney's like oh crap so that's when the Fantasyland expansion happened and New Fantasyland came and the land of Avatar and Star Wars Galaxy's Edge you know all that started happening but Again, right now, we have nothing in the works for Disney. That you have the new Communicore Hall opening up in about a month. That's it. Nothing else. We're assuming that we're going to get all these major announcements uh, at D23. But, you know, Test Track is going to uh, shut down next month for a, a year long refurbishment. But again, it's nothing new, it's just getting redone. So it's still going to be Test Track, just a different variation of it. Animal Kingdom, same thing. They're gonna, they're gonna at some point close Dino Land, but it's still gonna be part of Animal Kingdom. It's just gonna be rethemed again. Dinosaur is rumored to become Indiana Jones, and a couple other new attractions are gonna be added. But we still need, you know, or, uh, Disney needs expansion. They need another park. They need to expand their current parks and stop just retheming attractions. I, I, I don't understand why they can't get off of that high horse of oh we'll just retheme attractions that'll be fine because what i found interesting is a couple of podcasters have talked about this uh more recently wdw pro in that park place on youtube uh they're saying how the the summer season looks very very slow for for disney world not sure how universal's gonna look but i think right now especially with epic universe coming down the pipe for next year a lot of people are it's going to be one of those times where if you if you want to come to universal to ride rides and not wait in long lines this might be the time to do it because a lot of people are going to be waiting till epic universe opens and then they're going to book their vacations very excited for the stuff coming to universal i'll keep you all updated on dreamworks land um also the uh Cinnabon project no idea what's going in there that was all that was news to me walking in because I might plan to stop in there and get some coffee not so much <laughs> so we'll see what that turns into and we'll be back lots more to come I'll keep you all updated we'll see y'all again shortly have a fantastic day have an outstanding weekend and the Yankees are in town to play the Rays let's go Yanks I'll see everybody Main Street Fire Rescues now out of service have a fantastic weekend